Hello and welcome back to this series on text classification and topic modeling all in Python for the digital humanities or anyone who's generally interested in this subject. In the last few videos, we've looked at kind of part two of this series, which was doing rules-based methods such as TF-IDF and introducing some unsupervised learning methods such as k-means clustering to identify topics and texts. In part three of this series, starting with this very video, we're moving strictly into the world realm of machine learning topic modeling. In this series, in this part three of the series, we're going to be looking at latent Dirichlet allocation, better known as LDA topic modeling. And the main purpose of this video is to introduce you to the key concepts and introduce you to why this method of topic modeling is perhaps better suited for certain problems over k-means clustering. In the last video, or the last few videos, we looked at k-means clustering. K-means clustering actually looks something like this. Imagine that you have three documents. Now, these three documents, you tell the system that you want it to cluster everything into two topics. So document one goes to topic one. Document two goes to topic two. And document three goes to topic two. In this scenario, every document is assigned neatly into a k-means cluster. So it's clustered based on its closest proximity to um, a cluster in an unsupervised learning method. The major downside to this method and why it might not be suited to all problems is that every document receives merely one topic. However, we as humans know that topics have or documents have multiple topics within them, especially longer texts. So in my opinion, I always try to use k-means clustering as a first step for all uh, documents, but I've found in the past that it works better with shorter texts, such as those TRC descriptions that we saw in part two. LDA topic modeling, however, provides more nuance, more subtlety, and more uh, the ability to extract more information from documents and topic modeling. So imagine we have this same scenario, these three documents and two topics. An LDA model would look something like this. Now, this looks pretty similar on the surface, but there's one major difference. Document one is now going to topic one, just like last time, but document two is going to uh, topic one and topic two and document three is going to just topic two. We also see the difference in these percentages. So document one, 95% correlates to topic one. This means that uh, a lot of document one is gonna deal heavily with whatever document one is. Document two, however, is a rough 50-50 split. It's 50% topic one, 50% topic two, and document three is about 75% and topic two. Now, this is what an LDA model will do. It'll see if a document has multiple topics within it. These topics are latent, hence the L and LDA. So what we are trying to do with LDA topic modeling is to use machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, to generate X number of documents, in this case two, or topics, in this case two, and try to see the proportion to which a document might actually fit into any of these categories or these topics. And it's really well demonstrated in this image that I found from an article on LDA called uh, Latent Dir uh, Dirichlet Allocation for Topic Modeling of the CFPB Consumer Complaints. I have the source down below and I'll provide a link in the description to the article. In this document, we actually see LDA at play. I purchased a vehicle from XXX and it goes on. Now, the red words in this article indicate topic number one, car, vehicle, finance. The yellow indicate topic number two, collect, agency, recover. And the third, the green colors represent this third topic here. So these are the different topics in the text, and you can see how they are being divvied out proportionally. So in this scenario, you've got different proportions for different topics. There is more red going on in this document, so it receives topic one, vehicle, car, finance, etc., with a higher degree or a higher proportion, whereas yellow is a lot less but still relevant, and green is slightly less relevant than that. It's coming down to... The essentially the same kind of concept as TFIDF and k-means, but a little bit more complex because words can be, or uh, text can have these multiple layers or proportions of topics. Why is this useful? It's very useful for more robust documents. Think in the realm of 250 plus words. 
So maybe in our case, what we're going to see oral testimonies from the Holocaust, so long texts, it can actually extract more sophisticated and more robust different types of topics within them. That's going to be what we focus on in part three of the series is LDA topic modeling, how to do it in Python. And in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to the key library for topic modeling, specifically LDA topic modeling, and that's Jensum, which if you've seen my NER series, you're familiar with Jensum a little bit because we used it to create word vectors. In this series, we're going to use it for its intended purpose, which is to create LDA topic models. That's going to be it for this video, though. Join me in the next one while we explore Jensum.